Okay, so what we're going to look at in this session is we're going to start to think about, um, we've talked about monitoring and what we need to monitor and, you know, what's going to happen there, what we're looking for. Now we're going to have to, a bit of a think about, well, what are we going to monitor? Well, more to the point, how are we going to monitor? Okay, so what are the sort of monitoring types that we have and what are some of the tools that we can think about? Look, monitoring tools, there's quite a range of monitoring tools. And once again, it's always going to come down to what it is that you're measuring. Okay, if you're measuring sales, you might need things like to develop a sales tracking sheet to let you know who sold what, by when, how, etc. You could be monitoring your financials, you could be using things like MYOB to get bank account statements. Um, you could think about your productivity, you could think about um, getting some sort of activity tracking sheet for your people where they're measuring all the different things they're doing for the day so you can see how many of your staff are doing what. Um, it can be performance appraisal reports, okay, so there's a whole range of tools you can uh, use for that. If you're putting in place a process, what you can do is design a Gantt chart, um, always something to have there. Um, a lot of people talk about them, um, they're, they're fairly popular, you can look them up online, etc., and really start to understand what a Gantt chart can do, which is about tracking process. And when we're doing that, that's usually our project planning, that allows us to put a row of activities we're going to undertake, and then we can see whether we're actually achieving them. And it allows us to measure multiple things at once. So there are a range of those tools out there and a different bunch of spreadsheets, flowcharts, etc. But really what we're starting to do is we're starting to look at, um, when we're doing this, regardless of the type of tool, um, we're looking at an informal approach or a formal approach. Okay, so obviously that makes, you know, makes sense about how that's going to work. So with regards to the formal approach, it usually indicates some sort of particular point to gather information. You know, kilometres, distance, time. Okay, it's where I'm setting in place a very rigid or very fixed idea of what I want to measure and when I want to measure it. Okay, so um, at a certain date or at a certain point, I will uh, start to look at what's happening. And where we see those in businesses, you know, your sort of Friday afternoon meetings, uh, you could have a scheduled meeting every morning uh, where we come by and gather that information. It could be at a certain, you know, once we have achieved X task, we'll monitor at that stage, um, and that's up to us. But making sure if we're gonna do that, make sure everybody knows when, um, so that, that way you don't get any surprises. You don't wanna have a meeting where people turn up um, and they weren't really aware they were coming to it because they won't have the best answers for you. You wanna make sure that People have time to gather information for you, make it successful. The other approach is an informal approach to gathering the, uh, that data. And, and look, you can still do that as part of your routine, um, you know, walking around, taking samples, checking things as you go, gathering information, observing. Uh, that's not such a bad idea. And it can um, start to get into things like, you know, preventative maintenance or finding faults or problems. You know, you're just sort of having a bit of a walk around understanding what's going on, check things, measure things, you know, a bit like a chef in a kitchen, you know, you try the soup, you try this, you try that, just to check to make sure that everything's working the way it should, and that way you're just having a quick spot check. It's not as involved as a process, as a formal process, where you're going to go into a lot of detail, it's more a case of as you're going along, you're grabbing those uh, bits and pieces of information up. Once again, um, you know, part of this, it's that word again, is consultation. Okay, once again, make sure you've thought about how you're going to gather this information, okay? Who do you need the information from? Are you going to have different groups? Are there going to be different groups that you're going to gather up? Are you going to have your uh, morning meeting for just your salespeople and get those people together? Um, are you going to make sure that it is your managers? And you might just want to talk to managers about issues that uh, relate to them. Um, it could be, you know, groups of customers if you really wanted to, or any other sort of specialist niche areas that you might be uh, considering. You might also think about how you're going to designate them um, when you're looking at policies and procedures. For things like looking at your workplace health and safety, um, there are actually laws in place that tell you you must be doing this monitoring and consulting because you always have a, a responsibility to ensure a safe workplace. So that's going to come back through, you know, making sure that it's safe by, by monitoring formally and informally to make sure things are progressing as they're supposed to. And by law, there are groups that you need to talk to for that. So make sure you check that out, um, you know, <laughs> for obvious reasons. So as I say, you can think about your employees, you can think about your managers or supervisors, um, you can think about those specialist groups. It might actually be your customers for customer satisfaction. It might be a, a simple thing of, you know, back in the day when I worked for, um, you know, in the banking industry, we'd occasionally call up as a manager, call up, you know, a few customers, 
find out what's going on. Um, hi, I noticed that you came into the bank the other day. You spoke to a couple of my staff. What was, your, what was the transaction like? And that's a totally different experience to when they went through the formal customer service uh, surveys where they sent them out in the mail or uh, we might have had a mystery shopper, whatever it happened to be. But it's a great tool to try and understand you know, what's going on around you so that you can make some decisions. Um, you might also think about other work groups or teams in your organization. Um, you know, it could be anything from sometimes, you know, I've had to monitor what the cleaning staff were doing. Um, and that was literally walking around and, and having those informal checks to make sure the place is clean and tidy. Um, to check the bins, check the floor, check this, check that, make sure that, uh, you know, that the place was presented well. And that would just be as part of my daily housekeeping. Um, we would then sit down with the cleaning contractors on a, on a regular basis, you know, quarterly. And, uh, and talk through you know, some of the other nuts and bolts and things that we wanted to get done. Okay, so once again, we need to just think about what the processes are and who we want to start to deal with. Okay, so what are the processes or, or, or what are the activities you're going to have in your organization and how do you need to track them? Do you need to develop sales tracking sheets? Do you need to develop some sort of measurement of productivity? Are you going to be looking at your bank account balances? Are you going to come up with diagrams? Um, who do you need to consult within your organization? So who are you going to start to deal with? Is it going to be different groups of staff that you're going to designate or are you going to try and deal with everybody? Um, it's great if you involve everybody. The benefit there is that everyone then knows what's going on, but the, the downside to that is that it takes a lot of time and effort and people can sometimes switch off a little bit if it's something that doesn't you know, involve them directly. Um, they might not want to um, participate in that. But ultimately, it's always going to come down to whether you've made a decision to use an informal system of measurement or a formal system of measurement. But the reality is you probably need both. Um, one, to walk around and keep te literally being the, the, the chef testing the meals um, and also being the same person that runs the restaurant, starting to ask the customers satisfaction surveys, etc. Looking at your productivity, checking what your measurements were, seeing whether things are working the way you need to. And if they're not, going back, consulting with your people once again and starting to take that forward. And um, that's the sort of basic monitoring you need to think about. Um, and now it's over to you to work out more how you're gonna implement that in your business.